I mean, you know me, I'm all about philosophy. I'm always diving down my philosophical pursuits and, um, and I've been thinking about this video I watched um, on Professor Beckman's, I think I'm saying that right, Beckman, Beckman whatever, um, on his channel, super cool dude. Uh, but it was about how on a philosophical level, your, you know, Nietzsche once said that your humility and your meekness, like your kindness, is not like a virtue, it's cowardice, you know? And I think Jordan Peterson has even said something similar, despite what people feel about that guy, I actually think he's full of some wisdom, okay? Like, let's be real. So... I've been kind of on this, like, path of trying to understand the opposite, you know? I'm, I'm one of those people, I will constantly, like, research the opposite views and try to, try to understand things from another perspective, um, because it's like when I got the, um, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, I also got, um, the Dawkins delusion. I never forgot who wrote that, but I, you know, because I like being the devil's advocate. I like hearing, you know, what makes people think differently and kind of challenging my own way of thinking because so many times I've found that I've been wrong, right? And there's something kind of beautiful in being able to be wrong. And there's like growth and learning and new understanding and that wrongness isn't like it's there to it's not it doesn't hurt my ego or my pride to be wrong it it actually helps me to become you know more knowledgeable and wise in the long run so I see it to be kind of nice to be corrected and to, and I think everyone should kind of have a level of handling it maturely when they're corrected in situations because we're not always going to be right, <laughs> you know? We're not always going to have all the answers and, you know, somebody may have it more right than us about a lot of things. And, you know, I spent my whole life trying to be really nice, like super nice trying to love everybody, trying to, you know, be as charitable as possible and, and doing all those things. And I found it to make my life kind of fucking hard. Um, because I was so busy, you know, doing my Aquarius shit, being such a humanitarian <laughs> and just like so worried about the grand scheme of like everybody and everything. And, how can I save the world? Well, you know what? Maybe I can't save the world. And maybe that's fine. I could help one person and maybe for them I help change their world, you know? And it's not my responsibility to be out here saving everybody, <laughs> you know? And that was, that was a hard one for my ego to take. Not even my soul, not my spirit. That was a hard one on my ego because my ego was telling me this whole time like my self-importance says that I should be able to do that. <laughs> I'm just so cool. I'm gonna save the world. <laughs> and guess what, chicken butt? I did not do that. And and that's fine. <laughs> that's not what I'm here for. In fact, half the time I needed saving for my own damn self and my own, you know, elevated thinking so I'm kind of on this pursuit of seeing another side and maybe you know like exploring different philosophies in my own practices um, we all know how hedonism went for me <laughs> that was fun <laughs> that was a fun one uh, but then I realized that I can't be completely hedonistic um, because I have virtues <laughs> that I just couldn't see past. I, you know, I, I had to, 
I had to mind my virtues, I guess. Um, and you know, I like a good balance of stoicism and hedonism. I don't want to be so stoic that I'm a narcissist, and I don't want to be so hedonistic that I'm completely selfish, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, you know, and maybe that's, that's where embodying all, a, a little bit of all the philosophies, you know? And, and I feel the same way about different theologies. Like, I'm not, I'm not a religious person. I do believe that for my own personal spiritual journey, I like to adapt different spiritual practices though, that have come from different religions and spiritualities and things. I think fasting is pretty good. There's been scientific, you know, evidence that fasting helps. I think meditation is good. There's science on that, you know, and I, I do like to have as much like data as possible to kind of back what I do as well because I don't want to just have blind faith. You know, I grew up on blind faith. Watched my parents do their blind th faith thing, you know. <laughs> like, saw group psychosis through the church, and honestly, that's just not me. Um, not knocking it. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. Just, uh, well, maybe I am knocking it, to be honest. Because I don't think you should have blind faith in anything. I think that your views and your spirituality and all those things should be based around what you know to be facts you know not based on what somebody else is telling you like duh, 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 duh. like what are what are your own experiences you know what what kind of data have you collected on you know like check the stats like has meditation actually helped people and you know practice it to see if it actually helps you and I mean shit Ramadan was one of the most spiritual experiences I ever fucking had and I'm not Islamic at all but I'll tell you what I've never cried over a burrito before <laughs> until Ramadan <laughs> like having to wait for the sun to go down to fucking eat oh my god and, and it was what month was that I think it was like May or something I don't even remember it was while back but I remember it was hot like I had to work all day I was moody I just wanted to eat <laughs> I was losing my shit and so I was like you know when as soon as like the sun went down it was eight o'clock and I and I'm watching the horizon line like come on just go down son <laughs> like I need to eat <laughs> and uh and then, yeah, I had a whole emotional experience over a burrito, you know, and that's, I needed that. <laughs> I, I think I really, I needed it because how the hell am I going to know if anything's right or wrong if I'm not willing to put myself out there and explore it? You know, I may not believe in Islam, but you know what's interesting too is everyone talks about it being so oppressive towards women, but I've seen a lot of quotes where, it, or a lot of, yeah, quotes from the Quran where the Prophet actually talked about respecting women and honoring them and all this stuff, you know, there's so much to be, you know, it's like, dang, you know what, I'll put, I'll put some of those quotes in the beginning of this uh, video actually, so you can see. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you just, it can be so unexpected because so many people base their opinion of these religions and doctrines and stuff just off of, like, what they see from the practitioners, but they don't really, uh, dive too deep to really understand what the actual, like, principles are, what what they're actually saying, what the books actually say, even Christians, I've yet to be a Christian that's actually read their entire Bible and shit like that's it makes it fun for conversations when I'm like but bro like how do you survive Leviticus <laughs> that was a hard one for me I was like fucking 10 years old like um this is messed up dog <laughs> I don't know about this and you know but how do you know you know unless 
having blind faith in in atheism is also a problem. Have you even seen the scientists, the sciences on that? Because Neil deGrasse Tyson is the reason I believe in higher dimensional beings. When he was explaining, and I've I've mentioned this on several videos before, but when he was explaining how like if you have an ant on a table and the ant can only perceive this second dimension, right? And you put papers all around the ant. Then you lift those papers up and you put them up on the shelf. Then for from the perspective of the ant, all those paper dis all the papers disappeared from the second dimension into the third. You know, just vanished. And so and we can interact with ants, we can, you know, control their lives, we can make ant farms, dictate their futures, we can influence a lot, we can, you know, hose an ant hill and all that, and they won't have any conscious realization of us up here, because they're focused on their shit down there, right? They're focused on getting their foods and you know taking care of what they need to take care of and their queen and all that and so when an, an ant you know or sorry and so from the perspective of just you know seeing the second dimension to the third dimension because we're multi-dimensional beings we can only perceive right the third dimension um with our eyes i should say you know and so that's only from the second to third dimension according to the maths that i've seen and the sciences uh, there's at least 11 known dimensions in our reality right the fourth dimension being time because it's temporal so even that we we have an understanding of right and who's to say that the earth itself isn't a conscious being that we don't comprehend because we're just ants to it right or the planets or you know who's to say that the entire solar system can communicate to each other in certain ways you know there's like like we're like in a Russian nesting doll, basically. How can we, how can we be so selfish to think that us as these tiny little beings, or like if there's, you know, other dimensional beings that they're, um, that their dimension is, oh, what is that word? Not parallel perpendicular if their dimension is perpendicular to ours then we couldn't actually see them at all right they could interfere with us they could look into our brains they could like see into you know because it's perpendicular it's not it would be like us looking at a two-dimensional drawing and say like you make a drawing of a box and in the box there's all those things well you can see into the box but if you draw like a little creature that's looking at the box they can only see the outside lining I don't know how to describe this without drawing it but <laughs> basically a, a dimension that is perpendicular to ours could see a lot more than we could and can have a lot more interference with our existence than you know than a lot of people are aware of and so that's where i think a lot of these phenomena are happening and a lot of you know strange encounters and the unexplained stuff because some of it like can't just be written off you know like people have spontaneously combusted and you know there's so much random shit like how does that happen how i i need to know you know like that's um 
like at where I worked at the rabbit cellar before, um, there was a box of gloves, or not gloves, a box of um, rags, and they're clean rags under a sink in a box. There were no, they were by no like flames or anything. And in two situations, this box had randomly, spontaneously combusted, almost burned down the rabbit cellar. There was like a whole ordeal about it. Um, and it happened twice. Uh, it was worse the second time, but nobody was there to ignite it. And like, you know, we had cameras and stuff, it just started smoking from the center of the box. And I want to know, like, how does weird shit like that happen? Well, maybe because there are things that we can't perceive, you know, because we're only perceiving the third dimension. We're not perceiving outside of that with our naked eyes. And yeah, so I know this is a long tangent. I have a long drive for work. <laughs> It's just, I also have a lot on my mind in regards to that, like, I feel that a lot of what, a lot of the cognitive dissonance in the world stems from, like, an inability to take on new information or information that, like, contradicts what we've already learned or, you know, know about, you know, the world and the universe. And I think reality is such a strange thing. I don't think, and I feel like anybody who's ever done DMT knows this, right? <laughs> like, you can't, you know, you can't do something like that and then just look at the world the same again. It's like, no, uh, it, it opens your eyeballs, <laughs> your other eyeballs, all the eyeballs, like, you know. Because I feel that there's, you know, just so much out there that can't, that humans have limitations on, right? Like, due to how many cones you have in your retinas, depends on how many colors you can see. So, that alone tells me that, like, every individual is looking at the world through a different lens, right? They're not seeing the same color schemes, they're not seeing the same depths. Some people have depth perception issues. Um, you know, some people have weird color blindness where they see everything in shades of light purples and stuff. And I don't know, it's like, it's crazy. And to think that, you know, every, that people can be walking around thinking that they have all the answers. It's crazy to me. And so I challenge you to find the things that you're so sure about and challenge it. Challenge that thought process. Listen to the opposing viewpoint. Listen to an opposite perspective because you might be surprised <laughs> um, at what you find. Even in regards to, it's like, you know, when I was trying to be so positive and so like da 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 and I was like that's fake and do I want to be a fake person because that's not authentic to what I actually you know was feeling or the feelings that I needed to process like why would I have an entire range of emotions if I'm only supposed to experience like two of them that's stupid <laughs> okay no I want to experience all the emotions I want to know you know like why? Why do I have to feel all these emotions? You know, why is there an entire spectrum of them? And what can I learn from them? Because I don't think that there's any bad feelings. There's just bad responses to feelings, right? Bad reactions to feelings. And we can evolve enough to like really dissect our feelings and really see like you know, we might be disappointed by things, but is that disappointment stem from a personal entitlement? You know, like, why did we, you know, why do we deserve for things to go in another way? Or why do we feel entitled to certain outcomes? Certain, you know, responses from others or whatever, you know, like, when people feel rejection and they get like really upset about that it's like well how did you grow an attachment to something or somebody that had never like 
reciprocated that, you know, and, and growing an attachment to a person or an outcome is a dangerous game because you're really not entitled to that. As much as you might want it, as much as you might desire it, there's no rule book saying, hey, just because you like somebody it means that you get to have them, right? Or just because you want to be a billionaire means that you get to be one. Like, no, you have to put in work to be a billionaire, right? Or you have to align yourself with, you know, in that way. And perhaps you could be the perfect match for somebody and they could still be like, nah, you know? And it's because they have free will, right? And we have to respect that too. And, and like, I feel that sometimes disappointment helps us to face our own selfishness and to confront our own shadow in that way and confront our own entitlement, our own ego, you know, and it's okay to let your ego get bruised, man, because like the more your ego gets bruised, the more you can integrate it and be like, all right, man, like maybe you're overreacting right now <laughs> to whatever, da, 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 but like, you know, it's going to be okay. And there's like that level of like, that's where self-love comes into play. Like you got to love yourself even though you are fallible, right? Even though you do fall short, even though you are not perfect, you still got to wake up and be like, and, and show yourself some love. Give yourself some self-care. Well, I mean, you don't have to, right? But you should. Um, because, you know, you wouldn't expect perfection from anybody else. You understand other people are fallible and you understand I think the only people that people actually think are perfect are themselves and their partner and when they get you know hugely disappointed by that you know it's like it's such a hit to the ego but it's like why why do they have to be perfect why do you have to be perfect you know like maybe perfection is not real <laughs> or you know I just I don't even like the idea of that because people are perfectly themselves and they don't have to live up to a certain to other people's expectations in order to be perfect because they're already perfectly them um, they don't have to have manners <laughs> you know they don't have to be nice all the time niceness is weakness it's cowardice right and I mean be nice to people yeah however if people are perpetually testing your boundaries or if people are um, they take advantage of you or show you disrespect or they're you know like why the fuck should you constantly be nice to them hell no nah. hell no nah. it's okay to tell people to fuck off and it's perfectly spiritual okay <laughs> that's your throat chakra right we got to open up that throat chakra and be like you know what nah I ain't doing this today you ain't testing me uh-uh <laughs> you know and and you'll feel so empowered you'll feel so empowered by living authentically rather than living positively you know you're not always gonna be fucking happy and that's okay feel all the emotions feel them deeply and understand them and you know seek understanding when you struggle to have it that's the beauty of the human experience and is that there's so much to be learned and so much to be gained there's you know I mean it's a beautiful life and I know everyone's like, well, there's this problem and that problem and this could be better and we have shitty pol political leaders. Well, guess what? They're all fallible. They're all, all of them. They think they're doing a good job. They think they have your best interests at heart, which is crazy, I know, but that's coming from where they are in life, right? Because they're only looking at a handful of people and they're like, well, I know that this benefits my friend, so, you know, it must benefit a lot of people, you know, or whatever. And I'm not saying that they're all right, right? They're not all right. They're just coming from their own level of understanding of the human condition, which is minimal, right? It's a, a small understanding. They don't have... Um, 
you know, we only get a little tiny piece of the pie of understanding. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like in the same way that we got to be forgiving to ourselves and like understanding our fallibility, that, that understanding should be, you know, projected to others, you know, like we should try to, to come to understand them. We should try to, and, and you know, like you're more likely to enlighten somebody through peaceful dialogue than you are through yelling, you're wrong and I hate you and you're evil and da, 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 da. that's not going to change their minds and it's not going to make anybody better or feel better about anything, right? It's not. And the only way that, you know, people really grow is when you are able to sit down and have open dialogue with another person and listen to their viewpoint. Try to understand their viewpoint. Your viewpoint might even be the one changing. You know, you might find places where your opinions and your mindset fall short. Um, and be open to change, right? That's being open to changing our mind is a sign of intel of intelligence, right? If we're so stuck in our ways and if we always have to be right in every scenario, then that's a sign of ignorance. <laughs> so if you fancy yourself smart, <laughs> you know, then you have to also be wrong sometimes. As much as I know it sucks for the ego. Ego has to go through this though. That's when you know the ego is like your toddler self and the only way to to grow that part of yourself is to not let it get what it wants all the time right you have to you have to kind of be stirred it's like you have to parent your ego a little bit and you have to like you have to let it go through some shit you might feel shame you might feel embarrassment you might feel um all the things you know <laughs> you might feel disappointed you might feel angry you might feel you know whatever you're gonna feel all the things and that's okay because at the end of the day you can still hug your little ego self and be like gangsta we still good <laughs> I know you're still there to have my back you're just not you know you didn't just then because you know <laughs> The ego is very immature compared to, you know, the rest of ourselves, right? So, and and I, I really like, like, Carl Jung's idea of integrating the shadow, integrating the ego, rather than, like, killing it. You can't kill your ego without killing yourself, right? It is you. It's the part of you that you don't like so much, and it's the part of you that overcompensates when you struggle to like yourself it's there to protect you it's your it's your survival instincts and you gotta let it do its job to protect you but you also gotta shut it down when it's not useful or when it's like doing too fucking much you know and you know when it's doing too fucking much we all know it you know I, I've noticed that like I am my happiest when my ego is at its worst, okay? <laughs> like, I'm gonna be real. That's, that's my um, fallible truth. Is that, like, when my ego is running rampant, I love that shit. I'm like, hell yeah. We are the best. <laughs> it's dope. And I have to face my... Where I fall short there. You know, and that's uh, part of my experience. It's part of the way the cookie crumbles, if you will. And I'm, you know, I don't think that that makes me a bad person. I think that my ego is like an evil queen, <laughs> you know? And it's like anytime, like when I was going hedonistic mode, mm -hmm, that was my the time my ego shined. Loved it. Um, we were talking back to people. 
uh, putting haters in their place, eating all the snacks, no exercise. It was great, you know, and I'm not saying that was the best way to be, obviously not, or I would have stayed that way. Obviously there were downfalls to that. However, we had a great time and that was part of my experience and part of my learning and part of what I needed to like really grow as a person, <laughs> you know? I'm still learning and growing as a person and I'm not gonna stop, you know? that's. A lot of people think like that you reach a point of enlightenment, that you reach samadhi, you know, but like it's not a point that you reach, it's not a place, it's not like heaven, right? Nirvana is not a place, it's not a destination. What it is, is a mindset, right? It's when you reach that like, that that mindset and then you'll lose it and then you come back to it and you'll lose it again and you'll come back to it and that's just the way this thing works um, it's you know it's a constant pursuit it's not something that's ever like really attained for the for the long haul but are you in my lane Um, and you know, so yeah, this tangent really did go on, <laughs> didn't it? I mean, it's a long fucking drive, so and there were detours along the way, so I was like, well, shit, if I'm gonna have to face the detours, I may as well get a video in. You know, it's, I think, at the end of the day, we're all kind of, like, the, the wisest you'll ever be is during the place where you realize that there's more wisdom to be gained, you know, and the dumbest you'll ever be is in the, those moments where you think you know everything and you have all the answers and there's nothing more to learn. And that's just how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pander over here. I'm not gonna be like, oh no, you guys are never dumb. Guess what? <laughs> Everyone's dumb sometimes. Oh my god, I'm gonna name my next song that. Uh, <laughs> but it's true. We all have our moments where <laughs> our intellect falls short. We make stupid decisions. And we do the things. It is what it is. Um, and that's all part of your experience. You're not supposed to be a perfect vessel. You're supposed to be perfectly you. And I'm going to end this here. I feel like I got it all off my chest. I feel like, I feel like we're really bonding now, guys. <laughs> um, so, namaste. I love you guys. And I hope that you guys um, find value in, in this rant. <laughs> I'll see you next time.